As an athlete in your sport, you're subject to doping control. If you get selected for doping control, it's important to know what's involved. During doping control, urine and or blood samples are collected, packaged in tamper-proof containers, and then sent securely to a World Anti-Doping Agency, accredited laboratory to be analyzed for prohibited substances. Over the next few minutes, we will take you through the key elements of the doping control process. Doping control can occur anywhere and anytime. You can be selected for out-of-competition testing and in-competition testing. Out-of-competition testing can take place just about anywhere. Examples of out-of-competition testing locations include the gym, track or pool, as well as at home or accommodations. In-competition testing takes place during an event or immediately thereafter. There are many different ways you can be identified for doping control. These include predetermined or target testing, random selection, finishing position, bib number, and lane number. Meet your doping control chaperone. The chaperone is a sample collection official who is trained and authorized to carry out specific duties, including notification of the athlete selected for sample collection and accompanying and observing the athlete until he or she arrives at the doping control station. During notification, the chaperone will approach you and identify themselves as a doping control chaperone and show their official accreditation. He or she will confirm your identity and inform you that you have been selected for doping control and you are required to comply with sample collection. Please be advised that failure to comply or refusal to provide a sample may result in an anti-doping rule violation. The time of notification and your signature will be recorded on a form. During this part of the notification process, the chaperone will verify and record your identification using a valid piece of photo ID such as a passport inform you of the details of your doping control session. This will include information about the type of sample to be collected, either urine, blood, or both, and who has requested the testing, otherwise known as the test authority. Upon arrival at the doping control station, you will be asked to sign in. When you are ready to provide a sample, the chaperone will inform the DCO. The DCO is an official who has been trained and authorized to carry out the responsibilities of sample collection. The DCO will check your identification and begin completing the doping control form. The doping control form is the official record of your sample collection session. He or she will then review your rights and responsibilities and ask you to declare medications and or supplements taken in the last seven days and for blood collection, any transfusions received within the previous three months, including the date and reason for the transfusion. You will also be asked if you consent to your samples being used for research purposes. You will take a moment to choose a securely packaged collection vessel from a selection of vessels. Make sure the vessel you pick doesn't have any tears in the bag or cracks in the vessel. This is a great time to ask questions and discuss any modifications to the process that may be needed. Ready to go? You will be accompanied to the toilet by a sample collection official of the same sex as you. You must provide a minimum of 90 milliliters of urine. First, you will wash your hands with water only and then rinse them thoroughly. Remove your collection vessel from its plastic bag. You will leave the lid inside the plastic bag until later. You'll then be accompanied by a sample collection official to the toilet. Once at the toilet, you must disrobe from mid-torso to mid-thigh to ensure the sample collection official has a clear and unobstructed view of the passing of the sample. You will then return to the doping control station to split and seal the sample. In the event that you are not able to provide the required 90 milliliters, the partial sample will be securely stored using a partial sample kit until you are ready to provide a second urine sample to complete the process. Once you have provided 90 milliliters of urine or more, you are ready to choose a uniquely numbered kit which includes an A and B bottle. This kit will be used to seal your sample and transport it securely to the lab. 
All kits come securely packaged. Ensure the one you select is not damaged prior to use. Remove the contents of the box and take the plastic shrink wrap off the bottles. Place both caps on the table, numbers down, and discard the red rings from the neck of the bottles and the pink paper from the kit. You will first verify that all of the sample code numbers on both glass bottles, both caps, and the box all match. The sample code number will then be recorded on the doping control form. The DCO will guide you through the pouring of your sample into the A and B bottles. The DCO will ask you to place the caps on the bottles and turn them clockwise until they are tight and the clicking noise stops. Ensure the bottles are properly sealed. The DCO will repeat these same steps and then the A and B bottles will be placed into the plastic transport bags. Once the bottles are placed in the box, the DCO will verify the specific gravity of the sample by using the residual urine in the collection vessel and a digital refractometer. This test will verify whether or not your sample meets the minimum lab requirements. If the sample's reading does not meet the minimum requirements for analysis, another sample will be required. You will be asked to discard any urine remaining in the collection vessel into the toilet in view of the sample collection official and then to discard the collection vessel upon the completion of the testing session. In some instances, you may also be asked to give a blood sample. The Blood Collection Officer, or BCO, is an official who is qualified and has been authorized to collect a blood sample from an athlete. The DCO will remain with you during the blood collection and guide you through the entire process. It is important that you remain seated and relaxed for at least 10 minutes before undergoing venipuncture. 
Once you are ready to provide a blood sample, you will follow a very similar process as with the urine sample collection. You will select a blood collection kit, inspect it for damages, remove the plastic packaging, and verify and document the sample code numbers. The collection of blood samples is crucial for detecting the broadest range of substances and methods on the prohibited list. Blood collection is also making an important contribution to testing for blood doping and human growth hormone, as well as long-term monitoring of specific blood parameters, which is known as the Athlete Biological Passport Program. You will be asked to place the bottles in the holder and the caps on the table. You will select and open a packaged needle and a package of vacutainers from a selection. Place pre-printed sample code number labels lengthwise on each of the vacutainers, then give the vacutainers and needle to the BCO. The BCO will then explain the blood collection procedures, inspect the equipment, prepare you for the blood collection, and proceed with the blood draw. They will ensure you have an unobstructed view of the process. The BCO will invert the tubes 8 to 10 times, then place the tubes upright into the kits and provide any athlete specific aftercare procedures. You will then seal the blood samples, document the related information and prepare the sample for transport You will be asked to place the bottles back into the holder and destroy the extra barcode stickers and place them in the garbage. For certain tubes, it is important that the samples remain at room temperature for 15 minutes before they are placed into the cooler. You may remain with the samples until the 15 minute wait period has expired. The information related to the blood collection will be recorded on the doping control form and, when applicable, on an athlete biological passport supplementary report. Include any comments you have regarding the doping control session on the doping control form. Verify the entire form and then sign it once you are sure all of the information is correct. You have now completed the sample collection process. Take copies of your paperwork with you. Be sure to file them in a secure and safe place. Time to sign out of the doping control station. You're all done. Thank you. The DCO will send your sample by secure courier to an accredited laboratory for analysis. Every sample is key to protecting your right to fair, ethical, and doping-free sport. Win clean!